Today we are going to, well, we're going to look at dangers of psychology, part four, no, dangers in psychology, part four, and, uh, you know, so far we've been looking at that chapter and <sighs> you can say that, um, there's a lot for us to learn when it comes to psychology and so i'm thinking we're gonna finish with this chapter we're gonna look at genuine faith genuine faith and presumption evil angels or god's angels controlling men's minds only if we yield what else clear insight Clear insight needed, and then prayer will prevail against Satan. So, and that's it. We're gonna look at those parts only. We finished that part yesterday, so we can start right here. I uh, see genuine faith and presumption. Okay. The promises of God are not for us to claim rashly to protect us while we rush on recklessness into danger. But oh, no, let me start. Let me let, let me restart. The promises of God are not for us to claim rashly to protect us while we rush on recklessly into danger violating the laws of nature or disregarding prudence and the judgment God has given us to use. This would not be genuine faith but presumption. And of course we can also go back to Matthew chapter four, you know with the temptation. Satan comes to us with worldly honor, wealth, and the pleasures of life. These temptations are varied to meet men of every rank and degree, tempting them away from God to serve themselves more than their Creator. <sighs> okay, all these things will I give thee, said Satan to Christ. To Christ. All these things will I give thee, says Satan to men. All this money, this, this land, all this power and honor and riches will I give thee. And many is charmed. This many st and many is charmed, deceived, and treacherously allured unto his ruin. Hmm. If we give ourselves up to worldliness of heart, and life, Satan is satisfied. Yes, basically, uh, that's from letter 1A, 1872. So, <clears throat> presumption. Uh, I think it's straightforward on this one. I don't even know if I should, but you know what you probably have done, and you know what I've done, and the the mixed feelings that we get afterwards so that's something to to think about sometimes you know all right let's go down to uh oh so the question is who is controlling your mind evil angels or god's angels control men's minds either the evil angels all the angels of God are controlling the mind of men. Our mind are given to the control of God or to the control of the powers of darkness. And it will be well for us to inquire where we are standing today. Whether 
under the bloodstained banner of Prince Emmanuel or under the black banner of the powers of darkness. So there's a simple, how would I put that actually? Um, simple equation. It's either you, your mind is, uh, excuse me, it's either your mind is being controlled by the Prince Emmanuel, which means at the end, you're going to be good and go to heaven and spend eternity praising God, or you are under the banner of Satan, which means you're going to lose, you're going to die in hell, uh, not forever, you're going to burn, and then you're going to turn to ashes, meaning you're going to be dead but you will be dead forever. You will no longer exist and that's gonna be your end. So which one do you want? I don't know. As you can see in the screen, you see the screen behind me? No, not the video, but the, the, the actual screen. <laughs> you can see the mind and you see two. Which one of them do you want? Oh, by the way, um, that part with the that part with the with the horns and all that—that's just um, something I found on, on the internet. That's not exactly how Satan looks like. Okay, Satan looks more beautiful than any of us on this planet Earth. So yes, just so you know, he's also an angel of light, angel of light. So that's just what the world perceives, but that's not that's exactly. I wanted to find something that has to do with God and Satan and the mind and that's the one that I found so that's why I'm using that one right now but you understand the point so that's what it is okay only if we yield Satan cannot touch the mind or intellect unless we yield it to him manuscript 17 1893 um, that one is pretty simple and you may ask, wait, how do we yield it to Satan? Well, when you yield to temptation, when he brings temptation into your life and you go with it, you basically yield your mind to him. So yes, that's just what it is. And that's how it works. And see, oh, we're almost done. We are almost done. We are almost done. Uh clear insight needed okay clear spiritual eyesight is needed to distinguish between the chaff and the wheat between the science of satan and the science of the word of truth yes there is a science of satan it's called actually well they call it hmm, evolution which actually is not even science that's a religion they, 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 they make it seem like evolution is science, which is not true. Right? Christ, the great physician, came to our world to give to give health and peace and perfection of character to all who will receive him. His gospel does not consist of outward methods and performances through which the science of an evil work may be introduced as a great blessing afterward to prove a great curse. So, uh, that's from letter 130-1901. So what it means is, hmm, how would I put that together? It basically is, uh, the outward appearance is, deceive, is, dece is deceitful, okay? So it's what's inside. And what, what, that, what that does is, when you live in an outward gospel, when the inside is not right, then you're basically with Satan. The same for the Pharisees. Remember the Pharisees? Um, they would stand in the corner of the streets to pray so that people can actually see them. But then Christ says, you're trying to show good on the outside, but inside, is about this, but inside of you is a tomb of bones, is a tomb or a cemetery. Basically, you are filthy, and you are of the devil, basically. So, 
and if you hear a, a train on if you hear a train on the back then that's because there's a train passing by so and of course my watch just told me it was it's actually six o'clock if you heard that noise too so yes the the outward blessing or the outward signs no the outward gospel is not of God because it's on the inside from the inside reflects outside not from the outside it reflects on the inside is the other way around. So, um, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's basically what I just said. Okay, so on to the last part. Last part prayer will prevail against Satan. Well, the prayer of faith is the is the great strength of the Christian and will and will assuredly prevail against Satan. This is why he insinuates that we have no need of prayer. In the name of Jesus, our advocate, he detests you know, in the beginning of the word. And so Satan hates the word, which is Jesus. And when we earnestly come to him for help, Satan's host is alarmed because they know they cannot beat him. Actually, Jesus would have just said, Let Satan and his angels be no more, and that will be it. So, but if Jesus had succumbed to one temptation, things would have been different. So, but praise God, that didn't happen. It serves his purpose well if we neglect the exercise of prayer, for then his line wanders or more readily or, or more for then his line wanders or more readily received. That which he failed to accomplish in tempting Christ, he accomplishes by setting his deceitful temptations before men. Testimonies for the Church um, Book one page two ninety six. Yes. When you cannot make um, succumb the creator, you go to the creatures because you know they are weaker, and that's what Satan is doing. But then you know that praying is a weapon against Satan, and actually, don't forget that part too. In James chapter four verse seven, submit yourself therefore unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee, and he will flee from you. So yes, there is a way we can overcome Satan. Is by prayer, um, and it's not like you go pray and then later on you go make you go sin, and then try to come back. People would think that oh, um, as long as I ask for God for forgiveness, I may go back and sin again. No, that's not how it works. You have to also fight against not sinning, or oh, fight against sinning. So you need to make in your put in your mind that hey, okay, I don't want to sin. And I want God to help me not to even sin. That's what it's supposed to be. But of course, people like to make things the way they want so they can keep sin living in sin and hoping that they will be saved. Uh, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> yes, it doesn't work that way. Anyways, guys, um, my name is Mario Michel. I... Uh, I hope to see you soon, but if I do not see you soon, I hope to see you again when Christ comes the second time. Until then, bye for now. Mario out.